Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology and Puente Hills Mall in City of Industry, California. I was recently in Ontario, California for the SoCal Gaming Expo and I realized that this mall was only 30 minutes from where I was and it's also been about 6 years since I was last here so I definitely wanted to check it out. Here's a look at the map and it's a pretty decent sized mall, it's in a cross shape and it's about a million square feet. It was originally developed by the Han Company and it opened between 1974 and 1975. It opened in phases between those years. It's currently owned by the Cam Sang Company and it famously served as the filming location for Twin Pines Mall slash Lone Pine Mall in the film Back to the Future. There's a neat replica sign here of the Twin Pines Mall sign that was in the movie and we'll take a closer look at it later on in the video. Now, the last time I was at this mall, it was pretty obvious that it was struggling, but it definitely wasn't this dead. I was honestly kind of shocked. There are huge chunks of this mall that are now just empty storefronts. There are a lot of things that were here the last time I was at this mall that are now gone. For example, there was a Toys R Us here the last time I was here, that's long gone, and there was also a Macy's and a Sears that were still open, and those are both closed as well. Half an hour before I had arrived at this mall, I was at the Ontario Convention Center at a retro gaming convention that was just packed with people, so that probably made the emptiness here even more shocking. One of the things that I really like about this mall is that even though it was remodeled around 2007, it still has these big conversation pit areas. I always thought these were really cool features at malls. I'm sure it's pretty obvious by looking at it, but up there in front of us is the former Sears store. Every time I see an old empty Sears, I always look up and see how many of them are left in the United States, and as of March 2023, there are 18 of them left. Overall, this mall's in fairly decent shape, but there are little things that you'll notice here and there, like these slashed up benches. But this mall does have beautiful skylight features in the ceiling. And trust me, you'll see plenty of shots of them throughout the video. I think the skylights in this mall are pretty great in particular because they're almost just like a vein of sunlight that runs down through all of the corridors in the mall. And they meet in the middle in the center point. It's pretty great to look at. Something that you'll see throughout this mall are signs that a renovation project has been started and that caused me to do some digging and I was surprised to find that the owners in 2017 submitted plans for a renovation of this mall that included revamping the interior and adding 80,000 square feet to it. There hasn't really been much talk that I can find of that second phase 80,000 square foot addition happening, but mall management claimed in 2020 that they were moving forward with the renovation of the inside of the mall. And it looks like they've started it, like I said, but it also kind of seems like the project's been abandoned. It kind of reminds me of Laguna Hills Mall in Laguna Hills, California, where they started a renovation project there and then after several years gave up on it. Unfortunately, in that case, they ended up demolishing the entire mall and I would really hate to see that happen here because this is the Back to the Future Mall. Movie malls are some of my favorite to check out and it always sucks when one of them ends up closing for good. As I was walking around, it kind of hit me that, you know, this might be the last time that I'm in this mall. It doesn't seem like it's going to be here much longer. The center point of the mall does seem to be the busiest part. It's also one of the best parts to look at. Like I said, all of those veins of skylight that run through the corridors meet up there in the middle. This is not what the busiest part of a mall at 4.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday should look like though. And also the abandoned customer information desk is not a good sign either. The Ross and the Burlington that are here were actually pretty busy, but they don't seem to generate a lot of traffic into the mall. I'm kind of curious as to what they were giving away for free here. The sign doesn't really say what they were giving away, but the Fiesta sticker made me chuckle because it reminded me of Fiesta Mall, which is what the vibes in this place are starting to remind me of. The pretzel kiosk is closed, but there is still a functioning Claire's here. They are usually one of the last things to leave a dead mall. Let's go ahead and take a trip up the escalator and we'll poke around upstairs now. I'm leaving this shot in uncut and at normal speed just to show how slow this escalator is. This is probably one of the slowest ones that I've ever been on before. 
Thankfully, it wasn't making a lot of noises and racket. I've been on some scary sounding escalators before too. The slow ride up is worth it though because you get a great view of the center point of the mall. Now over the years there has been fountains down there, a carousel, and even a koi pond. Unfortunately that's all gone now, but it's still a great view. Apparently opportunity awaits us this way though. As you go down the corridors of the mall and get further away from the center, it seems like the stores that are open are, you know, mom and pop local businesses. All of the national chains that are left seem to be clinging around the outside of that center point of the mall. In the first video that I did on this place, I criticized them choosing carpet up on the second floor. And I have to say, I am surprised how decent the carpet still looks. It's not nearly as worn as I thought it would be. Like I said, overall, the mall looks pretty good. I think that just adds to the eeriness of it being so dead. Across the way, there is more marketing for that planned renovation. For example, that thing that says, meet me at the Grand Staircase. I haven't seen any evidence of a Grand Staircase in this mall. Just empty conversation pits like that one down there, which are pretty to look at, but this place isn't going to stay open for much longer with them empty like that. Here's a closer look at that meet me at the grand staircase in the center court that doesn't exist and it doesn't look like it's going to exist anytime soon. It sucked that the Boba Tea place was closed because they have neon signs and that would have been cool to see them turned on, but also Boba actually sounded kind of good. This dead mall is a curious case because it seems like everything around the mall and even some things attached to it are very busy, but None of that seems to be helping the actual interior of the mall. I do always have to laugh at the overly positive marketing language that they use in malls like this. For example, Lifestyle Epicenter. Yeah, I, I don't think so. What kind of lifestyle is this an epicenter of? All the way down at the end is where the old Macy's used to be, I believe. And over to the right is an old empty footlocker. It's just empty storefronts down here. I was really looking forward to checking this place out in the dark, but when I got to the mall, I found that the hours had recently been revised and closing time on Saturdays is now 7 p.m. There are things that are attached to the mall that are open later, like the AMC movie theater that's here and the Round One Entertainment Center, but the interior of the actual mall closes at 7 p.m. on a Saturday, and I think that's the earliest I've seen a mall close before on a Saturday. If you haven't checked out the Back to the Future mall yet and you want to, I would do it soon because I don't know how much time this place has left. Okay, that PSA there is a little too on the nose. I really did laugh out loud when I came across this. Now here's something that's going to become a more common sight. Empty Foot Locker stores inside malls. Foot Locker just recently announced that they plan on closing 400 of their mall stores over the next few years in order to strengthen their standalone stores. Not seeing Foot Locker stores in malls anymore is going to be weird. Let's uh, go ahead and head on down to the food court and see what that looks like, because at this point I was actually pretty hungry. None of the food at the convention center looked good to me, so I hadn't eaten lunch. But, not surprisingly, I guess, the food court's pretty much dead at this point, too. There's very limited selection here. I would have gotten hot dog on a stick because I don't see those around very often anymore, but they were actually cleaning things up and getting ready to close for the night. I guess it just wasn't worth staying open any longer. Some of the spots had been obviously empty for a while, but some of them look like they may still be open that they had just closed early. The stuff that was open though none of it really sounded good, so I ended up grabbing dinner after I left the mall. It looks like there used to be a large H&M store down here across from the food court. The stuff on the wall there says it closed January 7th, and I'm surprised the mall lets them leave that stuff up for several months. I mean, it's basically saying, hey, we left this mall because it sucks, but you can still find us online. If I was mall management, I'd make them take that down a couple of weeks after they closed. After I made my way back to the center point of the mall, I was surprised to find that it had become much quieter down there. No wonder this mall closes at 7 o'clock. Let's check out something that's actually busy here though. 
This is a Round 1, which is a chain of amusement centers that are originally based out of Japan, but this is their first location in the United States, which they opened in 2010. They're similar to Dave and Buster's, but I like Round 1 better. It's amazing how different this place feels than the inside of the actual mall. This is actually a fun and exciting place to be in. They also have the largest selection of skill cranes that I've ever seen. And in the back, they have the bowling lanes. There had to have been more people inside this round one than there were in the interior of the mall. They've got pinball tables here, which are always nice to see, and they had one that I've never seen before. This is Pac-Man Panic, and it appears to be a like two-player versus pinball game. This looks like it's tons of fun. They also have a lot of dance and rhythm based games at round one. Those really aren't what I'm into, but they are always fun to watch people play. They also of course have tons of ticket games. But everything here is huge, which is what I like about it. They always have like the biggest version of every game that there is. They have a giant puzzle bobble machine, which is pretty cool, and I know it says bust a move on it, but the real name of it is puzzle bobble. That's what I've always called it. Like I said though, it is so strange to be in here and it's lit up like Vegas and then right when you walk out into the actual mall itself, it's just kind of dark and quiet. At this point I wanted to head back into the mall because it was getting kind of late. Well, not kind of late, really more just that the mall would be closing soon, since it closes so early. I decided to head back downstairs and I have to say the slow escalator down this time was actually kind of awesome because it gave me a really nice view of the whole center court of the mall and I really just wanted to take in stuff like this as much as I could. Because like I said, it, it may not be here the next time that I'm in the area. I wish I could strap a flux capacitor onto this mall and have it get struck by lightning and be transported back in time to this mall's heyday when there were big fountains down here and it was crowded and going to the mall was a normal thing that people did on Saturday nights. Now that we're back downstairs, let's take a closer look at that replica Twin Pines mall sign. It's neat that it has its own little alcove, but it sucks that it's down one of the deadest parts of the mall. I was also kind of upset to find that it's been damaged. The A is missing from the word mall. It wasn't like that the last time I was here. Although the last time I was here, the clock wasn't working. This one's mostly working. Here's some footage that I shot with a different camera and you can see that it's displaying the correct time of 1.16 AM like it does in the movie, but I don't know if it's supposed to be blinking erratically like that. But then yeah, just behind that sign is nothing but emptiness and quiet. It really is a shame to see the Back to the Future mall like this. I know that none of the interior was featured in the movie, but still it's an important film landmark. It is kind of an odd place to be in because I really do enjoy spending time in dead malls. Just, you know, the vibe and the aesthetic and everything is awesome, but at the same time you have to know that the time that you have to visit places like this are limited. Once they start looking like this, things really start going downhill. I had a hard time finding much information about where the renovation is at on this mall or what the future plans are, but I did notice that a lot of the empty spaces do not have for lease signs on them. If they've reached the point where they're letting leases expire and not signing new ones, it probably means that the future of this mall doesn't include things like keeping the main part of it intact. I don't think a mall that you can't get pretzels at anymore has much of a future. This is where we're going to wrap up our look at Pointa Hills Mall, also known as Twin Pines Mall. If you have any memories of going to this mall, or if this is a mall that you currently go to, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. The next time I'm in this part of California, if this mall is still open, I'll definitely check it out. After this visit though, that seems pretty unlikely. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on Pointa Hills Mall, or Twin Pines Mall, the Back to the Future Mall. 
If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the Retail Archaeology channel.